Welcome back. You know, a New Year's Eve celebration wouldn't be complete without a bottle of bubbly. Lori Forster, the wine coach, is here to show us how to choose the right sparkling wine to ring in the new year. Welcome back, Lori. Thank you. It's always great to be here. Always good to have yeah. you, too. So tell us about um, sparkling wine can actually be a pretty good alternative to champagne. It can be. Well, let's talk about what it means to be champagne, because in this country, we kind of think of champagne as a style. Anything right. that's bubbly is champagne. But in the world of wine, and I have here actually a real champagne, Nicolas Fouillat, it's from Champagne, France. Champagne is a place, and it's only champagne if it's made in Champagne, France, officially. Can you really the taste the difference? You can, I think, although I have a California one that rivals, and the only difference is that it's made in California. So let's and the see price what points are different? Similar. Oh, similar. Okay. So let's see what you think. The first one, the Nicholas Fouillat, go ahead. I gave you, we'll get to that, but okay. grab your flute there and take a little smell and a taste. How do you how do you drink it the right way? I can so never you figure that you out. You don't swirl it around too much because no. you swirl out the bubbles. This little sniff and then take a sip. Do you do the pinky? I don't. Is that a wine I'm thing? I'm from or? Jersey. You know, I can't be that fancy. <laughs> That's pretty good. All it's right. It's good, right? It's got a little bit of that sort of yeasty bread dough mm -hmm. thing that real champagne or wines made like real champagne have. Um, what I wanted to give you there is an all-purpose wine glass. Flutes are the best to keep those bubbles going. Okay. But if you taste the same wine out of that glass, it's going to taste a little bit different and have different aromas. A lot of people, when they're having champagne with dinner, prefer now drinking out of the regular wine glass. It's a little more abrupt in the it, wine glass, I think, than in the It's got a little flu. bit more power to it, yeah. 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 This Nicolas Fouillat is mostly red grapes, Pinot Noir and Ooh. Pinot Meunier, although it's made as a white wine. Right. Yeah. We don't How let much the does skins... this go for? What's the price point on so that? So that's $30.99, $30.99. Okay. Next to that, my one of my favorite sparkling wines, the deal here is, it's not made in Champagne, France, okay. but it's made exactly like Champagne. It's from Schramsberg in Calistoga, California. And Schramsberg was one of the very first California wineries to make a Chardonnay based. So this is all Chardonnay, okay. Blanc to Blanc. It's the only white grape of Champagne is Chardonnay. So it's all made from Chardonnay and it makes it more elegant and refined. Okay. So this is one of the first California ones and it was served at the Nixon Peace Talks in 1972 as the first non-French bubbly to oh, use wow. at a state house event. So, so for a DC New Year's Eve party, that might be the place I to go. I think it's yeah. a good one. Give it a try. This is $29.99, so a dollar difference. $29.99. Mm -hmm. I actually think I like this one better, to it's be honest delicious. with you. It really has a lot of elegance and great citrus fruit. Really, really delicious. But if you're having a large party, you're probably not plopping down $30.99 per bottle. Depending on how much <laughs> alcohol you're drinking, right? Right. So I have two affordables. I have okay. one called Chateau Gaudrel, and Chateau Gaudrel is from the Loire Valley. Now, when you make bubbly wine in France that's not in the region of Champagne, you call it Cremant. And this is a Cremant de Loire, meaning it's made in the Loire Valley. Okay. Made exactly like Champagne, but we can't call it that because it's, it's not, not in, in the Champagne. region. It's not in Champagne, right. France. So if you give this one a try, I'm serving it in my little uh, yeah, stemless flutes. I use these for my parties because they go in the dishwasher. They're no muss, no fuss. And this one's made from Chenin Blanc and Chardonnay blended together. Oh, I gotta start pacing fruity, myself a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. I'm gonna Fru be fruity, crisp, the end of the show. and clean. And guess what? Only eighteen dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay, that's affordable. You know, I, I still think I like the other one better. The that's my yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. And then, last but not least, on this lineup here, I have the cava. It's a Spanish cava. It's a blend of three grapes, okay. like most champagne is as well, but they're Spanish grapes. It's from the northeastern part of Spain. Crisp and clean. $12 a bottle. Okay. So you won't feel guilty pouring some orange juice if you want to make a mimosa. A little more bang for your yeah, buck. Yeah, a little crisp and clean. And I think it's really fun. Yeah. No, I like that. It's a little more mild than the other one. It is. I think. It is. And it's fun. Um, some people don't like dry champagne or dry sparkling mm -hmm. wine. So having a cocktail ready to go, what Everyone we have here a is a little 
individual Prosecco, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make what's called an Aperol Spritz. Okay. So I'm going to split three ounces of this in each of the two glasses, and three parts Prosecco, two parts Aperol, which is an orange liqueur from Italy. And I have that here. So you just put your sparkling wine, your Aperol on top. And you're and just eyeballing it. It doesn't yeah, have to be. Yeah, it's three exact. parts Prosecco, two parts uh, Aperol. You put your orange, a little bit of club soda here. Oh, you know how that always <laughs> yeah. happens. Cheers. And you just put a splash of club soda. All right. And you have your Aperol Spritz, and it's it looks so pretty too. Really pretty you put your orange in there. Is that for fun. a reason? For more, okay. just a little more flavor. And if you are giving a toast, you mm. have some tips for that too, right? I do. In my book, The Sipping Point, I have a whole chapter on toast, and people get so nervous. So think of what you're going to say before New Year's Eve. Get it figured out. And my trick is get a great quote and use it. So John Maynard Keynes once said, my only regret in life is that I didn't drink more champagne. <laughs> so you that say that, regret? you raise your glass and you say cheers and you sound like a genius. Hopefully you can do it before too much alcohol so the toast exactly. makes a little bit of sense. But you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well thanks so much for being here, Lori Forster. Thank you. And cheers to 2015. For more information on choosing the perfect bottle bubbly, you can visit thewinecoach.com and we'll be right, at, right back after this short break. Cheers!